Katie from Kathy's Cute Creations. This morning we're going to make a pocket prayer and I'm going to show you how to make it a little bit bigger than it normally shows in the pattern so that you can use it for other than your pocket. You could put it in your purse, you can put it in an iPad, you could put it behind the telephone, whatever size you want to fit that. And then I'm going to change the little saying so that it can be more personal in case you wanted to give this to a loved one when they were going into the hospital for surgery or maybe they're going into a nursing home or something like that. This way it's a lot more personal for that individual from you or whoever you're, you're giving it to or whoever it's coming from. Okay, so let me first show you how I've picked out some fabrics to figure out how to make it. And I'll show you this one here on the table. I'll flip it over front and back for you, okay? Alrighty, so you can get the pocket prayer uh, if you want to get the directions and have them downloaded or, I mean, sent to you or whatever. I believe the Shabby fabric sells them. Uh, other people sell them. But let me give you an idea of the one I did. Or I did two of them. I did this one here which I made a two by two inch square. It actually has a little cross inside of it. You can't see it, but you can see that something's in there. Okay. And then this is the little prayer here. They give you, if you buy the kit, it gives you the little printout. And then the way to change that, because I wanted to have it different, and I gave one to my swap partner that was a heart shaped. But I made this one today to do for a demonstration. So I have put an actual pocket on it right here. So you can put in whatever you want. And the reason I said that, let me show you the other side. So I went ahead and I put, I love you. And I quilted it with two different colors. Now you can make these any colors you want. You can make them solid. You can mix and match them. It doesn't make any difference. It's just your preference. And then the pocket I added like this. When they're talking about the pocket, they mean that the entire inside of it became the pocket. So this is not quilted. I'll show you here if I can grab my hand on it. This is totally open on the inside. So this can move around the little item in it. That's so that you don't lose it. Okay. So it can go all the way around it. Put it here into the purple side. The only thing that's together is this little knot right here in the middle, just like you would be tying a blanket together. This one is not, it's totally open on the inside like this, but I did not put anything in it. Okay. Because you're not going to normally wash them or anything. I put a specific pocket on it so that you could put your paperwork in it and so you can change it. So Megan did this one here for me. She printed it out. So this is how you can change it. So you can put, in, in this case, you can put this pocket prayer quilt was made especially for you to keep in your pocket. Well, if you want to change it, you could say keep in your iPad pocket, your purse, in your wallet, depending on the size that you make. You can keep it anywhere you want, it wherever it will fit for the size that you make. And then throughout the day, when your fingers feel the whatever item is in it, in this case... If I were to take, let's say that the person I'm giving it to has a cat at home. Let's say this is a child. Well, so that the child can remember their cat, I've got a little bitty thing here. And it's got a little kitty cat on it. So every time they feel like they need comfort, and I'll have this inside the pocket, and I'll pin it in there so that it doesn't get lost, then they can feel and remember their kitty cat. Because... Like it says throughout the day when your fingers feel the, and you can put the kitty cat, you can put whatever you put in it. If you've got a lucky coin or um, some kind of like a lucky earring or maybe a lucky button or whatever, okay, you put it inside the quilt and then it will be mindful of, and then this can be my love. If you've made this for somebody else, let's say Aunt Betty's love, Daddy's love, Mommy's love, whatever, and grace for you, and then... It says, keep it as a tangible symbol of, and then you fill in the blank, the word peace, or you can take it off, or you can change it, or whatever. You're making this thing personal for you to give to somebody else. Also, you could use the little uh, cross that comes with it. If you're, The reason I put this in is for all of those that are non-religious, you can still make this. You don't even have to call it a pocket prayer. You can call it... Um, your special pocket, it doesn't make any difference. Whatever the wording is, it is specific for you and put whatever you want in it. If you don't have a cat and you have a dog, I have a couple of here. This one's a, this one's a little 
Dash Hound Dog. See him on there? This one here is a little Scotty Dog. And then this one here says Made for You. Show it to you without the light. There we go. And this one here says Made Just for You. So Made Just. And then when you turn it around for you. But it also looks like a little kitty cat. Go that way right there. See it? Now these things are just little embellishment charms. This is a pack. I picked it up at Joann's. It looked like that. And it had five embellishments in it. I do not recall how much they were. It doesn't say on here. But it's to embellish because you can use these for your purse or anything. I mean, you can even put them on a quilt if you want. But in that case, in this case, I was putting them in a little pocket. And then, like I said, that's what this one. Now, this is measured. Let me see. How big is this? This is a little bit. What is it? About. Okay, so this one's four inches. That's how big that one is. This one's the two inch one. And like I said, you can put whatever you want in it or on it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make it. I'm going to go ahead and make another one for you. Just to show you how to make it real quick. You, and I did a little bit of, as you can tell here, just a little bit of freehand um, quilting. So here's a little heart off to the side here. Here's a little piece of a heart here. Off to the edge it got cut off. Because this was a lot bigger before I downsized it. This was a heart. The other heart was on the other side. Not like that. But you can do whatever you want. And I, this has just got uh, the cotton, cotton batting in it. And this was just some fabric. But it doesn't even have to be in pink. I just happen to have pink here. For the next one, I'm going to do these colors here. And I'm going to do strips. So let's get started doing that real quick. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take these little pinking shear cut off. I want to get rid of that because I do not want that in the way. So that's the first thing I'm doing. Then I have some even seams. And then whatever size I cut these, I will build it back up. So I'll show you. So let's say that I want to do it like in stripes, so that one, and then we'll go a little bit bigger here. Okay, and let's just go ahead and go a little about, I know this is going to be very small, but that's okay because we, we it can change up. So then what you're going to do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take this one, and I'm going to sew it to that one. And to this one. So that's the first thing I'm going to do to see how long it is and if I like it. So let's go over to the sewing machine. Actually, instead of doing that big, long, or wide yellow one, I'm going to go with this one here, the narrow. The more narrow and put it between that. I'm going to do that. So let's sew this to this and this to this. I'll just sew it and be back because y'all know how to sew already. Alrighty, so I sewed these three together. So now I say to myself, okay, this is the full size of the back piece. So does it fit? No, it's too small, so I have to add another piece. So I kind of like this blue color, so let's go with blue. And we'll sew this on there, and then that'll fit. Now, I don't have any of these ends cut off on this. And then I'm going to, after I get done sewing that on, I'll be right back, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Alrighty, so I sewed these three together. So now I say to myself, okay, this is the full size of the back piece, so does it fit? No, it's too small, so I have to add another piece. So I kind of like this blue color, so let's go with blue. And we'll sew this on there, and then that'll fit. Now I don't have any of these ends cut off on this. And then I'm gonna, after I get done sewing that on, I'll be right back, and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. Okay, so I'm back. Now the question is, does it fit? Yes, it fits, but which side am I going to quilt on? Because I'm going to quilt on this side, it's going to become smaller. So I better add another piece. So let's go and add another piece. And I kind of like the red one. Because the yellow is against that. So let's go ahead and add this red one. Now, at this point, I have pressed them all open. 
You don't have to press them open. This is what I want to do because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do when I get ready to quilt and I'm going to show you what I'm doing based on the fact that I've opened them up. Okay, so I have it that way now. So my next question to myself is, do I want to keep it stripes or do I want it cut it off and then put a plain piece on the side? And if you do that, you could actually put their name, whatever the person's name is that you're giving it to, because you can either monogram it, you can embroider it on there, you can do freehand embroidering on there. But like I said, you can take a piece off like from here, this corner. Let's, do I have it long enough? Let's go with this ruler here. Let's pretend I want to cut it off. I would cut it off from that corner to that corner and just take that whole entire section off which would leave me, let me give you an idea what it leaves you. If you were to do it, it would leave it looking like that. Then you'd want to come along and put other fabric on it, or maybe you want to go and do stripes this direction on your fabric like that. It's going to be up to you what you guys want to do. Alrighty, so I'm going to leave it like this. And actually what I could do is I could... Let's see, how long would that be? See, that won't be long enough because, well, yeah, I don't want to do that, but I could do stripes that direction, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and leave them all just like this. And now I'm going to go get me a piece of batting and let's, and this is where you're going to want to use your scrap batting. So let me get some out here. Okay, so I have two pieces here and I'm wondering if I make it fold that in half see even that will work and that can be double batting on that or I can do single I don't think I have enough on this nope I think that's too that's too small yeah we can't go with this piece I could go with this piece and just do one and don't do the two and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come straight down the line here on each side where my seam is on every one of those to do my quilting so let's do that over there at the sewing machine. I'm going to, I'm trying to think, should I be putting my walking foot on or I could just use my regular, I might want to go ahead and put my walking foot on. Let's go over there to the sewing machine. Now most sewing machines come with walking feet. You want to make sure you don't put your screw too tight against that plastic because you could break your plastic or crack it. Even the older sewing machines came with walking foots. All right, and I'm just going to start on this side here and I know that my seam is a quarter inch. So I'm going to I'm trying to think. Should I move my needle to the left? Let's see. All right, and I can just come right down here. Oops, as I slid out from underneath my fabric there. Okay. I'm just doing the 2.5. I'm not going any bigger than that. Okay, and then I'm taking this off and let's see here and as I made the comment in another video my uh, this machine the foot does not go to the right it only goes to the left so what I'm doing is on this one here since I don't have any kind of uh, left or right I'm putting the foot down so the foot is off to the left of the fabric, but I can see inside here on my foot right up against that fabric. Let me put my foot down. Here we go. Now let's see if I can keep it straight as I can. I already know my first line was wiggly. All right, take that off. And then let's go to the other one, do the same exact thing. And I'm just going to go back and forth from top to bottom. And that's going to be the quilting on this one.
going to take a look at it and cut it. Now keep in mind that this is bigger than our square. Okay, it's a little bit longer this direction, which is fine because we'll cut it down. So now all we're going to do is just go ahead and cut it just to get it to get the batting off of it. And then we'll put our other piece on it. So now the batting is off. And then we said we were going to use the, I think this was the color for the back. I can't remember. We'll use this one for the back. And we'll use this one for the pocket. So what we're going to want to do, since they're the same size, is we're going to go to the ironing board and we're going to press this down a quarter of an inch and fold it over and press it another quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to tack the corners just right here to hold that down into place. So let me do that first when I come back. And then I'll come back. Okay, so I want to put something up here at the pocket. So I've got this little piece of fabric here that I cut out like that. I put some stabilizer on the back of it to make it a little bit stiff. And I'm going to go ahead. Now this is where I reinforced my corner just to hold it down over here. And I'm going to put that right up at the top of that pocket. And that doesn't need to be fancy or anything, okay? And I'm going to have that set on there. Let me lift it up here so you can see it. Okay. I'm going to put that on the top. This is the pocket that goes on the outside on the back. Okay, so I want to put something up here at the pocket. So I've got this little piece of fabric here that I cut out like that. I put some stabilizer on the back of it to make it a little bit stiff. And I'm going to go ahead. Now this is where I reinforced my corner just to hold it down over here. And I'm going to put that right up at the top of that pocket. And that doesn't need to be fancy or anything, okay? And I'm going to have that set on there. Let me lift it up here so you can see it. Okay. I'm going to put that on the top. This is the pocket that goes on the outside on the back. Alrighty, so I went ahead and I put a little stitch on it there. And keep in mind, even if this gets washed, it's still not going to fall apart. Okay, let's say that you've used it for a long time and it gets dirty. It's not going to fall apart. Alright, so we're going to attach this to that. And you can come as high or low as you want. I'm going to come down a little bit for the pocket. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just guessing that that's where I want the pocket to be. So I'm going to have to flip it over because you can see that it's too long. So I'm going to cut some off. It doesn't need to be straight on there. If you want to come at an angle, you can. I'm just taking a little bit off here. And then on this piece here, We're going to do it like this, and then you're going to cut on the right and the left of the back side. Okay, so you're going to take that off, you're going to turn it, and you're going to take this off, because now we're going to sew this. So this is all excess. So now if you wanted to make this smaller, you could make it smaller. And so we're going to put the right sides together. So even though this isn't sewn, that's fine. It doesn't make any difference. We're going to put our opening at the bottom. Okay, so this is the top part. This is the back side. This is the other side. So you're going to put your right sides together. Oop, let me clip this little piece off here. Okay, so these are right sides together, just like that. And then we're going to go over there, and I'm going to pin them. And you just spread it out like that, and we're going to pin them. All right. So let's go over to the sewing machine. Now, maybe you didn't notice in the other one, but the corners had cur. This other one had curves. Let me get it real quick. Now, maybe you didn't notice in the other one, but the corners had cur. This other one had curves. Let me get it real quick. Now, see how this has a curve on it? That's what I'm going to do with this one. So to do that curve. I took a lid, so this is the lid off of this button thing here. I just took this lid, and I'm laying it down the corner, just like that. And all I did was took my pen and wrote on it. This is that friction pen, so that I can cut that off. And I went ahead and I pinned it on both ends. I'm just trying to keep the things together, that's all. One over here. And 
And I guess you could just take this pink fabric if you wanted to and just go all the way around it. And I'm putting the the top of the cap to the right hand straight edge and also to the left and that's when I'm making it. So they all end up being the same. And it's just on the pink, it's not on anything else. And then what I'll do is I'll hold all of this together before I cut it like that so that they all stay together and the whole entire thing gets cut. Then I'll put a pin right there in the middle of that. And then I'm going to put a pin here because this is where my pocket is, the corner of it right there. I'm going to go down here. And it's okay that that's longer because what I'm going to have to, I think I have to, let me cut that off first. I might have to redraw my circle. Let me go ahead and do this other side first though. So at least I have all of these the same. bottom. First I'm going to pin it because I'm pushing it down before I cut it off. Flip it over and you can see the excess. So let me get my ruler. This one should work. Because I've got to make sure that I have enough batting. I don't want to be off the batting there. Okay, so now take this and let's redraw our cap because the size is a little different. Okay, not much, but a little bit. And then cut that. Put a pin in it. Cut this size over here. And put a pin in it. Now this is the bottom right here. This is the sides. See the little part right there where the pocket got folded over? Okay. So this is the part that I'm going to leave open to turn. So when I go to sew it, I'm going to start right here, go all the way around it, and then meet it back to here and stop. So let's do that first. Now for this project, I just used white thread, but you can use matching thread. Or if you want some kind of thread to stand out, you could use it. Now, depending on the size, if I want to go a little smaller with my pocket, I mean my, um, this little thing right here, if I want to go a little bit smaller, then what I would do is take and put the side of my fabric up along the foot, which is what I'm going to do. So it's not going to be a quarter inch, it's going to be a little bit more than a quarter inch. I'm going to go ahead and lock it into place here because when I go to flip this, I'm going to put a little strain on it. So I don't want these stitches to come out on me. And then you're going to be real careful when you go around this corner. Just slowly take it and turn it. I'm going to take my pin out before I reach it. And then um, this little pin cushion that I have, I put some felt at the bottom of it. Let me see if you can see that. I put felt at the bottom of this pin cushion so that that wouldn't be so rough. That's a piece of wood on my sewing machine. And you guys can do that too when you get things that need a little bit of something on it. All right, let me make sure I've got that over far enough. I don't know if I do. I might have to come back over. Uh-oh. Did I just boo-boo? Let's see, where's my... Nope, I did not. Okay. Somehow I got myself turned around on there. Let's turn that corner. And when you turn it, what I'm doing is I'm actually pulling a little bit when it turns that corner on the fabric. It helps it go around the corner a lot better than it just going by itself. So I'm pulling a little bit as I go 
It just takes a little bit of practice. It'll make the stitches a little bit smaller when it gets around that corner. Because as you hold on to it, it makes the stitches smaller. As you let it go, it makes the stitch bigger. And I'm coming around the corner. This is my last corner now. And I'm going to stop when I get about right here. So let me just get, I want to stop on a straightaway. I do not want to stop when I'm on the corner. It's too hard. So come straight, lock it into place. That should be enough to be able to turn it. If you want to use peaking shears at this point, you can. If you feel like you need to, I don't really want to. I'm just going to cut my tails off of my stitching threads and that's it and then I'm going to show you this is the tool that I'm going to use right here when it comes time to pulling that out let's turn it over here on the table what you have this is the part that's been quilted on this side there's the other side when you pull it through there I just take my hand go in here and I'm going to take this end which is the far end and kind of push it then I'll grab it with this hand as I pull and get the rest of it out of there that's all I'm doing just pulling it out and then this tool is pretty handy because you can go up to the corner, which is over here, because it's rounded, remember? So you're just poking it a little bit on both ends. Here's the other end. Same thing. Come down the corner. And you can actually put your finger in there. In the other corner there we go you can also use this rounded edge here that helps too okay so it looks like that and we're gonna tuck this in just like this and I'm gonna actually go over there and iron it okay because we're going to put stitching all the way around it here's what it looks like here's the pocket I'm going to iron this down because it helps when it comes to stitching. So let me do that real quick. Alrighty, I put two little clips on here. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to sew this down. I'm going to start up here at the corner. And we're just doing a top stitch. Now I'm just going to do a quarter inch top stitch. I really don't even need these clips because this is pretty well ironed down. And I'm not going to lock it into place. When I come back around, that's what will catch it. Go around a circle here. Go around the circle. So we'll just have to take a little bit of the time here. There we go. Right down to the end. And then I'm going to see if I can move that piece there. Because I'm going to go ahead and decrease my threads as I come across that. And then just backstitch. There we go. And then we'll take a look at it. Alrighty, here's what it looks like on the front with the pocket and the back and it's pretty neat looking and it's one of a kind because it came from you and now is where you put your little note in there and um let me see if i got a i think i got a one of those little pocket prayers let me find it now if you order these through the shabby fabrics i know that you will get a packet like this 
which will have a whole bunch of the little prayers in it. And then it has a lot of crosses and a lot of the little pins. But in our case, I want to go with this little dog right here. Whoops. That little dog right there. He's got the scissors. And I'm going to use a pen from this package. Of course, you don't have to use a pen. You could actually sew that if you wanted to. You could actually sew it on the outside of that. Because I believe the pins are to hold the little prayer so that you don't lose it out of the pocket. I believe that you just... Let's go this way with it. Because normally your little trinket is what I'm going to call it is sewn on the inside of this. But in my case it is not. And it's going to actually go in the pocket. Just like that. But in this case, if you wanted to, you could actually sew it with a piece of a thread. And you could sew it so that it can get tucked down inside there. Just put your thread. Let me get a piece of thread real quick. I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right. Now, for the purposes of this video, and a lot of times they'll take this prayer here and they'll put it on the back so that you can see it. So you've got your choice in or out of the pocket. And then on the other side, just for this video, I put it, attached it to the inside so that you won't lose it. This way, nobody's going to lose their little thing here. Okay, and it just goes inside. That's it. So I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for watching.